Hello, this is the next video in a playlist and I'm calling Introduction to Mathematical Statistics. We're in Chapter 3, part of this playlist called Continuous Random Variables. And let's jump to today's topic, which is transformation of variables, specifically univariate transformation. So far, we've used Theorem 1 from IMS 24. That means the 24th video in the playlist, Introduction to Mathematical Statistics, to derive the density of a function of a random variable. And here's the brief outline as a reminder. Let f be the density of the continuous random variable x. We let y be some function of x. And we want to find the density to say g of y by theorem 1. First, the CDF capital G of Y is derived as this. It's the probability that Y is less than or equal to capital Y is less than or equal to little y. Capital means random variable, little means some value, some constant. But Y is a transformation of X. And so now this probability becomes the X world. So we integrate the density of x over the region that this is satisfied. So it's all the value, it's all x such that r of x is less than or equal to y. Now, actually, this probability is something called lotus. It's the law of the unconscious statistician. And I have two or three videos on that in my playlist, and I'm not going to really say any more than that in this video. So then to find the density little g of y, by differentiating capital G. This is the CDF. So the derivative of the CDF becomes a density. And then we prove that in theorem one, and we've used it several times in this, in chapter three. So, but we're gonna introduce a theorem that we can go straight to the density. So let X be a continuous random variable with density F. Let Y be R of X, so it's some function of our continuous random variable where R is strictly monotonic and differentiable. Strictly monotonic means it's, it's strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. It works for both cases. The density for Y is denoted by little g and is given by this. G of Y is equal to this. F of, and we plug in the inverse function of R of Y, evaluated at Y, and the derivative of the inverse of R the inverse of R evaluated at Y with respect to Y. So here's the proof. First, let's assume Y equaling the function of X is strictly decreasing function of capital X, the random variable X. Since R is strictly decreasing, its inverse exists and it's also decreasing. Then the CDF of Y is this. So remember capital G, we're letting it denote the CDF of Y. And that's the probability that the random variable y is less than some value y, but y was r of x. Now, if we take the inverse of both sides, we get this expression, you know, inverse of, you know, r inverse of y, r inverse of r of x. Now, notice the sign change, but you also have to think about what the definition of a decreasing function is. So if we have constants, you know, a and b, you know, a less than b, if we take f of a and f of b, that means f of a is greater than f of b. I mean, that's the definition of decreasing. And since the r inverse is decreasing, we have to change the signs. Well, the, the inverse of a function of itself is just, you know, x. And this is whatever it is. Now, the probability of being greater than or equal to some values is the same as 1 minus probability of being less than or equal to that value. Now, the equal sign doesn't matter in a continuous random variable, so we can leave it on, leave it off. It's not changing the probability. But this is the CDF. The probability the X is less than some value, that's the CDF, you know, capital F. So now we have the CDF of G, which is this expression. Let's take the derivative of the CDF, capital G, to obtain the density, little g. So little the density of Y, is the derivative of the CDF. And now we let's look at it here. The derivative of one is a constant, so it goes away. That minus one is out front. Now the derivative of a CDF is just the density, and that's what this little f is, and we're still evaluating it at the same value. 
but the chain rule says we have to take the derivative of it. So it's the derivative of the inverse of r evaluated at y with respect to y. Now here is a big note that the inverse of r is a decreasing function. So if we take the derivative, which means we're finding the slope, it's going to be negative. And then that negative is going to cancel with this minus 1. So we can just say we want the absolute value of this derivative. Right? These two expressions are the same. And that's partly what we wanted to show. But now we have to prove the other case. So let's assume that y equal r of x is strictly increasing function of x. Since r is strictly increasing, the inverse of r is, exists and is also increasing, then the CDF of y is capital G of y, which is the probability that the random variable y is less than some value y. y is r of x. Let's take the inverse of r to both sides of this equation. This side leaves x, and it's whatever it is. But this is the, by definition, the probability, or the the cumulative distribution function, the CDF of x, which we call capital F. Now, now that we have the derivative or the CDF of capital G, we can take its derivative to obtain the density little g of y, which is this. So g of y is the derivative of the CDF. But that means it's just the derivative of this function, f of the inverse of r evaluated at y. So the derivative of a CDF is a density, evaluate the same value, but the chain rule says we have to take the derivative of that inside. And since r, since the inverse of r is increasing, this will be a positive number. So if we take its absolute value, it actually doesn't change it. So these two expressions are the same. And so notice that we have the same expression, whether it's strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. And we've proved the theorem. Now let's use it in an example here. Now in theorem 32 of IMS 32, so the 32nd video of the playlist introduction to mathematical statistics, we let x be a standard normal random variable and let y equal x squared. Then we showed y has a chi-square distribution with n equal 1 degrees of freedom. Now let's use theorem 45 to find the density of y. Now note that x, you know, the standard normal density, is the entire real line. So y is not strictly monotonic on this interval, right? x squared, it decreases and then it increases, so it's not strictly anything. But if we restrict y to, say, the negative values and then to the positive values, then the transformation is strictly monotonic on those specific regions. So since r of x is x squared, right, that's our function of x, and the inverse function is plus or minus the square root of x, so now let's look at the density over region 1, the negative values. So it's f of, plug in the inverse. Now, the plus or minus depends upon what region you're on. So it's minus when we're in the negatives, right? Because the slope is, I mean, it's, it's decreasing. And then positive, it, it goes uh, to the other side. So then the derivative of this inverse. So now f is a standard normal density. And we're plugging in the inverse of this, so it's minus the square root of y. And the derivative of the minus the square root of x, I, yeah. But we're evaluating at y. So that's, you stick in y there. That's what this says. So then you get minus 1 over 2 times the square root of y. But it's the absolute value. So that absolute value, you know, the negative goes away. And then we plug in the minus square root of y into the density of a, of a standard normal. But remember, it's, it's, it's x squared. And so the square of minus square root of y is just y. So we get this expression. Now, let's, uh, com let's the, you know, e to the minus half is here. The, the square root of y, let's take to the top and write it as y to the 1 half minus 1. We have square root of 2, and we have 2. 
But then we can rewrite these as, you know, the 2 comes over, square root of 2 is 2 to the 1 half, square root of pi is gamma of 1 half. Every other thing else stays the same. Now over region 2, we do the same thing but it's the positive square root of x. So we take f of this inverse evaluated at y, the derivative of the inverse evaluated at y, and we get this expression. Well, this is this is positive, so it just comes across, and then we uh, plug in the square root of y into the density of the standard normal, we get this, and we do the same thing. The, uh, the e is the same, the square root of, of y, we take to the numerator and write it as y to the 1 half minus 1, we get the twos and the square root of two, and then we, we uh, trick it. So this two comes over, square root of two is two to the one half. Gamma of pi is gamma of one half. Now, since y is over the same region, we just add them. So we add these two functions. And so notice that we have one half times this plus one half times this. So we just get you know this piece over here. The 2 to the 1 half, gamma 1 half, y to the 1 half minus 1, e to the minus y over 2. Well, this is exactly the equation of a chi-square distribution within 1 degrees of freedom. So, y equal, using the theorem, we just showed that y, when it's equal to x squared, and x is a standard normal distribution, is a chi-square distribution with 1 degrees of freedom. All right, we're at 11 minutes, so I'm going to call it quits for this video. And I think this is the last video in Chapter 3. We're going to go to Chapter 4, which is really the joint distribution of, of random variables. We'll look at discrete joint distributions, then continuous, and we'll move on from there. So I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.